Hey, what up players? This is Warboss Tay up in this mug showing you the built up Belial model that you'll see me review and unbox. Just a heads up, if you don't have time to watch this whole video, a lot of flash, a lot of problems, um, some mold line, nothing to really scream fine cast, but uh, they, because they seem to be fixing up their, their act and uh, especially now since they're moving away from doing fine cast so much but just wanted to let you know this is what the finished model looks like please stay tuned to hear my complete review and unboxing on it and check out war tiger this is his video uh for july painting challenge his appreciation video thanks for watching everybody laters what up players it's war boss tap in this mug welcome to an unboxing of this guy belial so today we're going to unbox this Dark Angels figure and it is in a July painting challenge appreciation video for War Tiger who is a fantastic participant, always fun to watch his projects and this past year he did a Deathwing vehicles uh, project. So uh, Deathwing painted uh, vehicles for the, for, the, for the Dark Angels, I guess army, but the special specialization is Deathwing Terminators, and uh, I, I love his projects, I love his videos, I love his channel. So War Tiger, thank you so much for participating and for sticking out the month, and <clears throat> I always enjoy following your work. So this video is for you, buddy. So here we've got two sprues of this Belial figure, and a base for him to go on. Now, uh, the Deathwing, in order to uh, get the most out of them. A lot of people say you should get this guy, Belial, and uh, he's a fantastic sculpt. I'm just kind of bummed that he's in fine cast. But we'll see how bad the damage is in just a second. So you've got these two fine cast sprues, like I said. And what I'm gonna do now is just clip him out and we'll take a look at everything close up. So here's the figure and we'll zoom in to see all the detail. You've got this awesome looking hooded uh, hooded head with a cowl with very cool looking pattern on it that you can paint up. And what looks to be like three little electric, electronic um, like viewfinders or yeah, you don't even notice it on, on the figure when it's painted up, but they look pretty interesting because it's painted up in the same bone color that most of the rest of the armor is painted in. Lots of Dark Angels iconography. Looks like, looks like they got their act together with fine cast. Um, because, and the reason why I say that is because every time before, if you remember there, uh, anytime Games Workshop would have to do skulls in fine cast, the skulls are always really janky looking and dented in one side and they look really malformed. And here you've got two tiny skulls and the skulls seem to be pretty spot on. I am not noticing any air bubbles or mold lines or mold shifts yet, which has always been a problem with me and fine cast. But I like the expression, very dour, grim, grim dark. And I like that the hood is hanging over the head at such an angle that if you hold it at a certain angle, if you hold it a certain way, then it gets covered naturally in shadow. And some of the older models, the cows had to be really thick over the head. If you look at the old, um, some of the old plastic sculpts, they, it's just hard to do in plastic, but I like the way that it looks like the fine cast hood naturally falls and creates this little fold over here on the side. It looks like natural cloth, and the robe in the front looks like natural cloth. Uh, Belial's got a bunch of keys, lots of symbolism uh, because of all the secrets that the Dark Angels have. And uh, if you don't know this, the Dark Angel's Deathwing, well, the Dark Angel's, their, their armor is usually green, but Terminators paint their armor this bone white because of this one incident where they were vastly outnumbered and uh, they were, they considered themselves dead men. So they, they paint their bones, they painted their, bone, uh, their armor in this ivory kind of off-white cream color to um, acknowledge that they were all dead men. Here's the power sword that he's got. Again, I don't see it. Fine cast. Uh, is that an air bubble? 
It's a tiny one, but you know what? That's that's not so bad as it has been for me in the past. It's uh, I've had air bubbles like going clean through arms. Or man, just look at my Vlad von Karstein video if you want to see how bad Finecast. Uh, look at any of my unboxing videos for <clears throat> Finecast products, and there's a lot of jankiness. You see a lot of flash here, down on the pommel and around the 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 backs of the uh, armor there on the the tubing and here on the actual blade of the sword. Easy to clean up, but again, flash is just troublesome because it's, you know, it's so, you have to be very careful with it. Here you've got a little, where does that go? This part goes right on the front, right there. Here is the back of the armor piece, the Terminator armor piece, nice and smooth. And here's the reliquary kind of altar looking back banner thing. So you've got scrolls, a banner, the Dark Angel's uh, chapter symbol, and this little symbol there. Okay, and the not con is it a combi bolter, twin link bolter, storm bolter? I I don't remember storm bolter. And I can never get those straight. The cool thing about this one is that most bolters don't have this or they didn't they would not have this for the terminators they would not have this strap so the fact that they molded this strap onto the arm there is pretty cool and again lots of flash but the dark angels symbol the deathwing symbol over here on the shoulder looks pretty clean there's no air bubbles feathers here another fun fact is that the dark angels originally were supposed to be like native americans so they had lots of like feathers and um, totems and things that made them look like Native American American Indians, and uh, they, they totally got rid of that. They made them more of a kind of monastic monk knight, knightly order, but uh, every now and again you see some kind of little tiny, tiny little nod to it because they don't like... When, when, whenever they retcon something, they like to keep it buried. All right, what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna put them put this piece together and clean up all the mold lines and I'll... Um, talk about how easy or difficult it was, and we'll wrap up this video. Okay, Vinecast, I've got some gripes. If you rewind the video like 10 seconds, look at the bottom of the feet, and you'll see lots of T sections of Vinecast uh, flash that are connected to the frame. Those are a pain in the butt to remove. In fact, removing any of these things from the sprue are a pain because it's almost like you're diffusing a bomb. You've got all these little branches of fine cast that connect the pieces to the sprue. And so when you're going in with your clippers, you gotta make extra careful that you're not clipping something like that that is actually a part of the model because there's just so much to look at. There's so much disgusting flash. So take care, be patient, and if you're coming upon something like here, there's a f nasty flash or a mold line right on the side of the robe there. When you clean it, either be very, very careful and use small cleaning motions like that, or if you have one of those terrible mold line scrapers. Even that though, a mold line scraper is meant to go on a smooth, even surface and not on folds of fabric. So the fact that there's flash like here on these folds of fabric, there's flash here at the bottom of these tassels is just uh, makes this model a lot harder to clean up and a lot more difficult to prep if you are a younger hobbyist or if you are inexperienced. So if you are one of those younger, inexperienced or an inexperienced hobbyist, just take care when you're using your knife to clean. Take care, you wanna get all the flash. There's nothing worse than seeing a model ready, all glued up, ready to spray and ready to paint and seeing flash on it. Okay, another gripe I have is terrible mold lines here in between these rivets on the shoulder plates and terrible thing about them, if we can get focus, sorry about that, is the minute you try to scrape in between it, the rivet almost, like, without any pressure at all will come loose and leave this these horrible looking air bubbles. So I'm trying to work very, very hard, but, or very intricately, but you've got these tiny little mold lines here in between these rivets. 
and they might not bother some people, but it bothers me just the fact that there's mold lines and 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 flash. And look at look at this flash here. How am I supposed to separate that? This flash that goes from there to here, all the way down to see if if I was a, a new and experienced modeler, I wouldn't know what to make of this. And the fact is, you just got to go and flush with your with your hobby clippers here and be very careful not to snip off the wings of the Dark Angel's pommel. And here on the other side, whew, it's like surgery. 